Hello, this is Paul London, and you are listening to yet another podcast, another wrestling podcast to be exact. This is a podcast about wrestling, but it's another one, another wrestling podcast. Enjoy. It's time for uh, another wrestling podcast. another wrestling podcast i'm steve credo and i'm jonathan benjamin wow jonathan we have a huge show episode 37 what can everybody expect today well i you know i have to say this steve and i don't know people may not believe me anymore but i think this is going to be our best show yet just to be honest uh we have some awesome guests today they're stopping by the studio we have Paul London. Uh, most of you fans probably remember him during his stint in WWE, a former cruiserweight champion, a former tag team champion, but he's so much, so much more. And none other than the Prince of Queens himself, Brian Myers, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins, is going to stop by the studio today. I, if that doesn't get you just to stick around on principle alone, I don't know what will get you to stay. That's right, Jonathan. Well, our, our two special guests uh they're also going to be talking a little bit about FWE this weekend at the Resorts World Casino. FWE is taking over, Jonathan, down in Queens. Tickets are going fast. If you, you're hearing this right now, make sure you head on over to FWEWrestling.com. Pick them up. Are you excited for it, Jonathan? I am absolutely excited. I can't even begin to start talking about how awesome some of these matches are. And FWE has proven themselves time and time again. You look at some of these things. There, right now, I mean, just because we're going to be talking to Paul London soon, Paul London, he's the Triborough champion versus Matt Seidel in a battle of who has the best 450 slash airborne splash. It's, <laughs> I mean, that is just amazing. That's right, guys. No Limits 2015. Uh, y- you can watch it on iPay-Per-View. You could, you could head on over to FWWrestling.com, check it out. Guys, a, a, a stacked card. A stacked card. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But, Jonathan, I want to talk to you about something. Yes, uh, sir. You know, everybody seems to be pissed off. Everybody's, all the wrestling fans, all the marks out there, they're mad. Uh, they're mad at Roman Reigns. You saw the Royal Rumble recently. Uh, the fans are turning on the show, Jonathan, and everybody's just mad. I guess they just don't know what to like anymore. What is happening? Well, I'm mad as hell that people are mad about wrestling. I, I can't, I can't really get it. My my thought is, if you are not happy with something, like if you wake up in the morning and you are mad because you're late, well, there's something you can do about that. You can wake up earlier. <laughs> if if you're at work and you're mad at a coworker because like you can avoid that. 
my point is if you don't like something then just just find a way around it if you don't like wrestling then as much as we are a wrestling podcast i would tell you i would suggest just don't watch wrestling or find an alternative so i think that as fans being mad today's show we should talk about some of the lighter moments in wrestling more specifically during the most famous era in professional wrestling ever, the Attitude Era. So are we going to be talking about what made the E in WWE? I, I would like to think so. I think that the funniest moments of the Attitude Era, there were so many. And, you know, we, we spent some time talking about this earlier today. And uh, we'll, we'll try to, you know, hit a lot of the major ones. But... If you're out there listening, uh, I'm sure you have a lot in your mind right now. So just give us some time. Hopefully we get to the ones you're thinking about. And uh, Steve, I, I think that right away, one that I'm thinking about is the DX press conference. Are you with me on this? I'm with you on it. Um, so <laughs> there was a time when WWE was pushing the envelope. They were damn near pushing it off the cliff. They were pushing it so hard, and I guess what happened is that Vince was getting letters from the USA Network and Standards and Practices stating that they could not say certain things during certain hours, which, I mean, it sounds humorous now to talk about this because um, in the past couple of years, people have gotten away with almost anything on on the internet, on television, so this is a time when it was a... a a little more censored, I should say. We will only use the words ass, damn, hell, and bitch. We will never, however, use the words shit, fuck, goddamn, Jesus Christ, fuck it, or any other racial or sexual slurs. Now then, as it pertains to video, we promise there will be less dick references. Oh, shit. Watch your fucking mouth. What? Fuck me. God damn it. Fuck. Anyway, there will be less pink references. Oh, and one last thing. Even though many of you believe that currently the favorite pastime in the oral office is swallow the leader, I did not. I repeat, I did not sleep with that young intern. As a matter of fact, I was up all night. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Uh, they kind of gave him the old fu to the FCC about you know what they can and can't say. And like you said, you know, uh, it was it was something to see. It definitely gave you a chuckle, if you will. You definitely laughed out loud. All those kids out there, you LOL'd at it. Um, you know, it, it was funny. It, it was different. Um, I think I believe it started the show that night too. So, what better way to start Raw than have a little uh, DX press conference on things you can or cannot say? So, what else stands out to you as maybe a funny moment in the Attitude Era that you can kind of go back and be like, "Wow, this was this was pretty funny." Well, I, I think that one of my favorites, and it's just so simple, but it was one of my favorite tag teams at the time, Edge and Christian, and. They were kind of causing antics backstage. I don't know if you remember. This isn't the actual moment that I'm talking about, but um, Christian was trying to get out of a match, and he was. This was when Mick Foley was the commissioner. So Edge told him that Christian was really sick and that he couldn't compete. And so Mick Foley walked into the restroom, and you heard like puking sounds coming out of the stall, and you see the camera look down into the stall. And Christian's actually ladling some sort of like liquid into the toilet to make it look like he was throwing up. That's one of the moments that they were doing. But as far as um, Edge and Christian, that they, they were you know having a lot of fun back then was when they played the kazoo's a lot. Edge, look at this, kazoo's and streamers. Oh, streamers rule. Yeah. Long live the stream. Yeah, and long live the zoo. Hey, listen to this. I'm gonna play our music. <laughs> You think you know me? You think you know me? You you All right, get out. I can play your music too. It's my time! It's my get time! Out. It's you my get time. out! Listen, I'll play your music for you. <clears throat> Two, three, four. Angle. <laughs> Angle. 
Guys, guys, guys. Cripes on Friday. Together, Edge and Christian reminded me of like a mini DX, if you will. I mean, they, they were hysterical together. They definitely came a long way since the brood. Uh, but, you know, they reminded me, you know, they started, it was the Attitude Era, so they were kind of getting away with anything they could. Uh, but definitely hysterical to watch, but de- definitely awesome to watch in the ring as well. Uh, Jonathan, on top of all this talk, I want to remind everybody, though, uh, if you guys head on over to youtube.com slash another wrestling pod, P-O-D, uh, you guys can check out some other exclusive interviews that we're going to be having on there. Uh, this week, we posted an interview with Billy Silverman. He's a former WC and a WWE ref. Uh, you might remember him in matches such as the Finger Poke of Doom, which was also uh, uh, pissed off a lot of people, but it was kind of on the lighter side of things. So we talk a little bit about that, so check him out. And speaking of other lighter sides, uh, next week on our YouTube channel, we're going to have... Who are we going to have, Jonathan? I can't even believe I'm saying this right now, but on another wrestling podcast, we will have the man, the myth, the legend, well, I guess the Mantar, the myth, the legend, uh, Mantar will be joining us on another wrestling pod from YouTube. Wow. Uh, uh, can't believe it, guys. You Check out our YouTube. We're trying to take over social media, so we're going to have like, a lot of exclusives on our YouTube page. So we're going to have Paul London and Brian Myers, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins, on here today. But you guys, you can check out a lot of other great interviews on our YouTube page, along with a lot of other things we're going to be doing. But back to the show, Jonathan. Uh, one of the best moments, I personally thought, was when DX dressed as the Nation of Domination. You know, the croc just came from the bathroom. The croc. And ooh, you should have smelled what the rock was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Velo. Nation ain't gonna like this. I ain't faking. You should have smelled what the rock was baking. The rock was baking. Brother was baking. <laughs> look at look at Velo. He's the man. He's the man. That yeah, I I can't imagine that not happening now. To be honest, it's a, such a great. Um, you know, it's such a great moment. One of my favorite parts about that, though, was not even somebody who was in the NDX at the time. Do you remember Jason Sensation? <laughs> yes, I. I uh, the well, yes, I, I remember him as uh, my good old my good old buddy Owen Hart. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. <laughs> that has to be a Owen Hart. Did you hear that? So what? Nobody listens to me. Nobody gives a damn what I think. And what the hell am I doing wearing this ridiculous outfit? <laughs> I look like a damn road sign. <laughs> what the hell am I? A school crossing? You know, I tried to be a tough guy, but I just couldn't grow my damn beard in. <laughs> and you know what? I am not a nugget! I'm a black heart, damn it! A winner! A soul survivor! Woo! Oh, <laughs> things are not well in Calgary that tonight. Is, that is Owen Hart! And if anybody smells what the rock is cooking, it's me! Look how big my damn nose is! <laughs> it was such an amazing moment, and it just made me like. I always wanted to have something to do with wrestling, so whenever I watched that guy, I was like, oh my god, if I could just, you know, impersonate <laughs> wrestlers, then I would be set, but obviously that didn't happen. But. Definitely. It, it was borderline racist, uh, putting on blackface and whatnot, but I mean, it was hysterical, and I think everybody had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, my favorite part is uh, X-Pac as Mizark Henry. Hey, 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 Rock! Mizark Henry! I don't know what you're cooking. Smells like shit. Oh my! But I think I'll eat some anyway. <laughs> I, I couldn't expect a better impersonation of the nation domination than DX doing it, and I could probably watch that over and over on a loop all day and not get well, sick of it. Yeah, Road Dog is Belo was amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was just—he had a beanie on and was like shaking his head. Yeah, it was. It was it was perfect. It was a perfect moment in sports entertainment. Uh, obviously, we do not work for the WWE, but you can go and relive that moment and many others 
on the WWE Network for just what, Steve? Of course, it's nine ninety nine. If you guys don't know that by now, I mean, come on. I wish we were getting paid from them to plug them, but uh, that's where you're going to find all the good stuff. Because if you're not a fan and you don't have it, you should have it, I guess, right? Um, but Jonathan. Yes, sir. The Nation of Domination, DX, uh, classic, classic, uh, fun, fun moments. I mean, these are some of the lighter side of sports entertainment, some of the lighter sides of the Attitude Era. Uh, you can't watch wrestling all day, so they got to fill it with other stuff. And some of these things that we're talking about, I mean, guys, what was your favorite? I mean, we're, we're na- naming off tons of stuff. Uh, let's keep the ball rolling, Jonathan. What, what, give me something else we could uh, mention. Well, I think that... It would be an understatement to say that during the Attitude Era, a lot there were a lot of vehicular moments. Um, some of those included Steve Austin riding to the ring on a Zamboni. Uh, some of those included, you know, people running over cars with monster trucks. But the next two that I am thinking about are probably the most famous um, vehicular moments in the Attitude Era that were also humorous. That would be the combination of the Steve Austin beer truck mixed with the Kurt Angle milk truck. <laughs> uh, fun fact for all you kids out there, the Steve Austin beer truck actually happened in our neck of the woods up in Albany, New York. Uh, I forget the name of the stadium back then because they changed it like 12 times, but uh, that happened right uh, right up the road from us, Jonathan, and that was classic. Um, do you think it was really beer in there? It had to be beer, right, or well, something? Well, here's the here's the fact on this. I have the lowdown on this. Ah, fact checker. There was uh, X amount of beer in the truck. Let's say like a hundred gallons of beer, uh-huh. and then after that, it turned into water. Ah. So when when the first spray came out and got everybody, that was actually beer. And I was watching, I think the Stone Cold, you know, documentary or whatever. But he he explained that in there. So. It was it was an amazing moment made so much better by the terrible acting of Vince McMahon, Shane <laughs> McMahon, The Rock. Like Vince was actually backstroking, trying to like swim on the ring. It was incredible. It was really just a, an amazing moment. Uh, once again, you should everybody should go back and, and watch that moment. Yeah, like, like you said, like everybody's so mad these days. That, like all the stuff like their guy isn't winning or whatnot, but you guys got to ease up a little bit. Enjoy the show. Enjoy it for what it's worth because you get a lot of these handful of moments we can go back in time and talk about. I'm sure in another episode we'll talk about, you know, newer age funny moments, but we're trying to try to reminisce in the past a little bit to get, get some of you, uh, to, to think about it with us. So, but Jonathan, if you ever spilt milk or beer on your shirt, uh, where can I get a new one? Well, I mean, you know what the old saying goes, don't cry over, over spilled milk. So instead of crying, you can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash another wrestling podcast, and you can pick up one of our shirts. There's three on the market right now. We are always looking for new ideas, uh, new designs, and we will hope to get a few of those up in the near future. But right now, we have in the studio... Brian Myers, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins. So let's get right into this. Let's talk to Kurt and see what he has to say about not only FWE this weekend, but what he's up to. On today's show, we have an amazing guest. He is quickly becoming one of the hardest working men in the business today. He wrestles all around the country and is currently training the next generation of wrestlers. Our guest is the Prince of Queens, Brian Myers. Brian, thanks for joining us. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. So how is life treating you these days? Life is great, man. I I love being a a busy professional wrestler. It's all I ever wanted to be and that's what I currently am, so... I have no complaints. Now, you're spending a lot of time on uh, the independent wrestling circuit right now, and a lot of people would probably say that independent wrestling is far better than mainstream wrestling. So um, what are your thoughts on independent wrestling right now? Uh, I love it, man. I love going uh, you know, town to town, and it's almost like a, a new challenge or, you know, every, everywhere I go because, you know, I wrestle different guys and different styles and sometimes people I don't even know, you know, at different places. And it's cool to see wrestling thriving and doing well and not necessarily under that WWE umbrella. Do you think that WWE's answer to the mainstream of independent wrestling is NXT? 
Uh, I don't really think they have one has to do with the other, to be honest with you. I think, I think NXT is a window into the WWE's future uh, because Triple H is so hands-on and running it, whereas the WWE product you see on television is Ben Turner and Steph and Kevin Dunn and all these other people with you know, a lot of influences, whereas NXT is, is kind of Hunter's little baby. So, And I think he's a smart enough businessman to know that the independence is a place to find talent, you know, and he, he has done such in using guys like Kevin Dean and, you know, uh, Sami Zayn and stuff like that. How do most people in the locker room feel when, like, huge independent stars like Sami Zayn, like Kevin Steen, they get signed to the company? Um, I I can't speak for everyone else, but I always just thought it was great. I feel like the best, the best wrestlers in the world should be in the WWE and be be paid the most money and be seen by the most people and be the most successful. To me, that's just the way it should work. It doesn't always work that way, but, uh, I, I want, I want to be surrounded by the best. You know what I mean? If I was building a roster, uh, that's who, that's who I want, you know? So the more, the, the more the merrier in this, in that sense. So as far as your time on the independence, who are you most looking forward to working with? Um, I've already wrestled with people that I, you know, was so thrilled to just get in the ring with, like AJ Styles and the Young Bucks and Adam Cole. Chris Hero, um, I've had a lot of fun wrestling JT Gunn in recent weeks. Um, I just got to wrestle Sanjay Dutt for the first time, so that's cool. I'm I'm absolutely thrilled to be wrestling Johnny Gargano this Saturday. Uh, I've been kind of friendly with him and I admire his work for quite some time now. So you know, things like that are all cool to me. You know. Now that's actually uh, that's this Saturday, February seventh, for FWE uh, No Limits at Resorts World Casino. Um, as you mentioned, your opponent is Johnny Gargano. Um, is there is there anything that you have to kind of tweak with as far as your style goes with wrestling him, or do you think you're you're you can just stay the your normal your normal move set and everything? There's nothing you have to change. No, I think that would be foolish to think that you know I don't have to uh, you know turn it up a notch or do something a little bit outside my comfort zone because especially with Gargano, he's a very unique wrestler. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the challenge. You know, I think it's going to be a clash of both our styles. You know. Now, aside from your current wrestling bookings, uh, you also run Create a Pro Wrestling School. How did you feel your school stands up to the other schools in the Northeast? Well, to me, in my area, I just don't see why you would, wouldn't come to me. I have eight and a half years of WWE education. Current, you know. Yeah. No offense to guys like Johnny Rods and whatnot. I mean, he he groomed an incredible crop of talent. That was, you know, 30 years ago. The guy's information is dated. The business has changed. I'm fresh off a hands-on WWE experience, and I feel like I have a lot to offer, a lot more than anyone else uh, on the East Coast, in my opinion. And if you are taking the pro wrestling business seriously and you want to really make a go at it, I think you would be very foolish to even entertain the idea of going somewhere else. And that's just my honest opinion. That's not me just putting myself over. It's just, it is what it is. You know? uh, how's the turnout been so far since opening last year? It's great. It's, uh, we have a lot of fun. I mean, the core guys, the guys that are stuck with it, the guys that are trying to make something of themselves are great. Everyone, um, you know, there's a real sense of, like, camaraderie that's built over the past year, which I'm real proud of, you know, kind of like the coach and his team. And that, that part's my favorite. But then again, the flip side is that, We've had so many guys come in and go and go out the door because they just um, their expectations are not realistic as to what professional wrestling is. You know, mm-hmm. people just are, delu- are just so delusional sometimes about how how real it is and how how fake it is and how they could think that there's no athleticism involved. It's actually kind of mind blowing. But those people get shell shocked and they're quickly weeded out. So it's, okay. it's to be expected. What is the one thing you tell your students that you wish someone had told you prior to getting into wrestling? That's a good question. Um, wrestling is is an art form, so there's there's so many things to learn about it. They almost basically like you know I'm still learning now myself. You just never stop learning because it's just so unique and it really is all to itself the way it is. You know, there's nothing else even comparable to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my biggest advice for anyone is just to stick with it because nobody picked up this business, you know, within a couple of weeks and was good to go. Even guys like 
super freaks like Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar were carefully groomed in the WWE system for you know years at a time before they you know before they were seen. So mm-hmm. and, those, and those are the two of the best athletes that the world's ever seen. You know. Yeah. So I would just say you know being consistent and to stick with it and be a student of the game. I, I can't stand when people don't you know don't know about current wrestling or don't know about their past wrestling. You know you got to be a student of the game. Now, that kind of brings me to something else that I wanted to ask you about. Do you think that people knowing that you were a big fan hurt you or, like, hurt your standing in the WWE? Um, I'd like to think it wouldn't. If it did, that's that's unfortunate. But I wasn't going to compromise who I am or how I felt, you know? Yeah. It wasn't like I was ch- chasing guys down for autographs backstage, but it's like I grew up watching these guys and knowing I know the history business and I respect it and... I'm always going to be a fan of wrestling. If I if I didn't feel the way that I feel about this business like I did when I was five years old, then I'm I'm going to stop doing this. You know, yeah. I always tell myself not to lose that kind of boyhood wonder that I had that got me involved in this in the first place and made me fall in love with it when I was five years old. So, to me, the whole point of being involved in it is to have fun and do something that you love. So, if it's not like that. You know, if, if other people are miserable doing it, <laughs> that's fine. But I refuse to change who I am just for their perspective of me. I think that's ridiculous. You have had a great career and have done things other wrestlers will only dream of. Uh, with that being said, what are some of the things that you still want to accomplish in your wrestling career? A laundry list of things. You know, I'm I'm never satisfied. I always, you know, if I knock something off my bucket list, I just put another one up there and I just keep going for it. Um, there's small, little, immediate goals, like I've never wrestled in Japan. That's, that's on my mind right now. And then there's big goals of, you know, someday being back with WWE and being the WWE champion, of course, you know, mm-hmm. which I think could be everyone's goal. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I have tons of little goals and aspirations that I'm digging for each and every day. Okay. Now, um, are you open to joining any other major promotion to wrestle full-time? Yeah, um... I'd entertain offers for sure. Uh, right now, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing, and I'm busy, and I'm still able to make a living, and just, you know, I'm my own boss for the first time in eight and a half years, which is, like, really, really something nice. I almost forgot what it was like, you know? Uh, but obviously, I'd never say never to any wrestling company, uh, and like I've said many times already, I just love wrestling, so yeah. um, to be a part of it is all I really want to do. You have done a few shoot interviews since being released. Does that help get some stuff off your chest? Um, sometimes. I just think, um, honestly, with the shoot, since I am such a fan of wrestling, I've watched almost, uh, you know, I'd say like 70% of the ones even out there just because I'm, I'm a sponge and I want to know and know the history business or I want to see this guy's opinion on this and that. Um, so when I do them, I kind of... And also, I have a really good memory. So yeah. I, I think... It's kind of the best of both worlds. And I know what a boring shoot interview is and a not good one, so I always go on my way to make sure I'm entertaining. So uh, that's why I think I've been asked to do so many of those, you know, the the, uh, the combination of having a good memory and still being entertaining, you know. As far as being a huge wrestling fan goes, uh, you know, on your Instagram account, I see a lot of your posts of uh, figures and things that you've had. Uh, what is your favorite piece of Kurt Hawkins merchandise that came out during your time in the WWE? Um, of my own personal stuff. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite item would be a Kurt Hawkins figure in the blue trunks that I won the tag team titles and it never, it was supposed to come out with Zach. Um, I believe it was going to be a Walmart exclusive and come with like the giant foam belt of a belt. Okay. And then we're each in there. And then the, that line or whatever, that series got canceled. But Jax gave me a few of the samples of it. So I have like one or two of it. So That's awesome. That's me. And then it's obviously special because it's in the, it's basically what I exactly looked like when I won the tag team title. During your run in WWE, you wrestled Hall of Famers. Future Hall of Famers uh, were thrust into the main event picture. What were some of the moments looking back that you can't believe you got to be a part of? Uh, I mean, the, the cool, well, the cool, everything we did with Edge is amazing because uh, the nostalgia and stuff put aside, it was just such an unbelievable learning experience. And 
Zach and I truly were head chance, you know, we and we still are. He's just somebody we looked up to and respected so much. Um, so that was just an unbelievable learning experience that you can never, you know, put a price on. I guess nostalgia wise, like the biggest thing that's pretty unbelievable that we did was wrestle uh Rick Flair and Shawn Michaels in a steel cage in Chicago. You know, that's something that, you know, if seven year old me knew that twenty four year old me was doing, he'd probably lose his goddamn mind, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now you're going to also be at the New England Fan Fest June twenty seventh, uh, of this year. It's going to be held at Rhode Island Convention Center in Providence. Uh, what do events like this mean to you? Uh, conventions are my favorite, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, not my favorite, but something I really enjoy. Um, but one, I'm not bumping or killing myself uh, physically. You know, it's a very relaxed day. Um, but then again, I, that's when I get the most one-on-one time with the fans. And for the most part, people are very nice and very complimentary, and it's just great to interact with them. And uh, I'm very grateful to have the uh, fans that I do. Lightning round. Worst travel partner. Uh, Hornswoggle, because he just falls asleep. <laughs> okay. Um, Actually, which, which uh, Johnny Silver from the Beaver Boys is an exact. He does the exact same thing, so that's tied for worst. Okay. Uh, best thing about Queens. The pizza. One person who belongs in the Hall of Fame that isn't there yet. If player got to go in as player and the four horsemen, then I feel like Sean can go in as Sean and the Rockers. Will we ever see a Major Brothers reunion? Uh, I mean, obviously, right now, contractually, it can't happen, but as soon as it could, I'm sure it would. If you weren't wrestling, you'd be doing what? Uh, impossible question to answer, because I've honestly never wanted to do or be a part of anything else so far, so. That's great. It, it, it truly makes up everything I am, and I, I, I have no idea. I'd be a completely different person. Okay. The greatest thing your fame has gotten you? Uh, I'm gonna have time to free shit. I mean, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, nothing crazy to go about. Nothing crazy to go about, you know. Right, right now, I'm doing, uh, like, net tickets. The celebrity that people say you most look like? Uh, I get Macklemore, uh, like, almost on a daily basis. Now, where can fans keep up with you and learn more about your school? Uh, well, I'm, uh, active on Twitter at, at the Kurt Hawkins. Uh, promoters can find my booking email in my Twitter profile. That's easy to find. Uh, my school is Creative Pro Wrestling Academy. It's got a website at creativeprowrestlingacademy.com. Our email is located there, and pretty much any information that you could want to know about it. Uh, and I wish to tell people if they're hesitant, just come down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 and 9, and just watch a practice. See what we do and see if it's something that you'd like to be a part of. Awesome. Now, you also have a Pro Wrestling Tees site as well? Oh, yeah. And my Pro Wrestling Tees store is prowrestlingtees.com slash Brian Meyer. All right. Well, uh, you can come out and see him this Saturday, FWE Resorts World Casino. Uh, I know you've got a lot of other things going on, so just keep up with him on, on Twitter. We'd love to thank uh, Brian Myers for joining us today and uh, hope you can come back again soon. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Wow. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, Brian Myers, uh, thanks for joining us. Guys, once again, FWEWrestling.com. If you're around this weekend, No Limits 2015, down at Queens, down at Resort World Casino, uh, check them out. Kurt Hawkins will be going against Johnny Gargano, uh, a stacked card. If you guys haven't seen FWE Wrestling lately, it's not that far away. If you're in the tri-state area, head on down to Queens. Head on down to FWWrestling.com and make sure you check out the show. Uh, special thanks to Kurt Hawkins once again for joining us. Um, Jonathan. But yes. W- w- let's get back on these funny moments, though, because, I mean, there's a still a lot more to talk about. I know we only scraped the surface, so what else could we get into? So I'm going to set the scene for you. All right. Vince McMahon is in a hospital bed. Ah. Uh. Um, Mick Foley has come in to try to help him get feeling better. He brings in a a clown named Yerple to make balloon animals. He brings in boxes of chocolates. He then decides to make the debut. Now, this is the debut of Socko. Mr. Socko made his debut on that very night. And, uh... 
Vince was not feeling so well, and this only made things worse. But what happened after that, after he sent Mick Foley packing, was probably the worst thing that happened to him that night. What the hell are you doing? M Mr. Sacco! <laughs> Say hello to Mr. Sacco! Mr. Sacco knows you've been feeling mighty bad, so he's gonna give your boo boo a hey, big nurse. kiss! <laughs> You're gonna what? Hey, hey, ah! No, Mick, please! Damn it, leave! Take this crap with you! Take it out! Take it all out! Looks just fine to me. How about you, Doctor? Oh, I'll take it from here, nurse. <laughs> Jonathan, uh, it, it's moments like these that just made being a wrestling fan uh, even better. Because, like I said, I, I'll restate it over and over: guys can only wrestle so much in a in a three hour, two hour show back then. Um, but having these lighter sides, these funny moments, uh, made it, man. Because like they didn't do a lot of backstage or. They didn't do a lot of on-location stuff, and when they did, it was like something serious, like at Brian Pillman's house with a gun or something like that. But being at the hospital, having Vince McMahon, having Steve Austin show up on top of all this, and the debut of Mr. Sacco, uh, he didn't even have a name. Uh, well, he did have a name, but Vince really cemented that uh, name in the history books, and from there on out, we had a sock puppet go along with Mankind. Uh, two people, two things you didn't think would really go together when he debuted, but, I mean, it's a classic moment in WWE history. It, uh, if I could have a loop of the noise that it, <laughs> that bedpan makes when it bounces off of Vince's head, I mean, it is it is an amazing, amazing sound. I wish I could have that on loop. Um, yeah, that, that was an amazing, crazy moment. The Attitude Era was full of those, though. Uh, the next one that we I want to talk about, anyway, is when the WCW versus WWE Monday Night War was going on, and they were constantly going back and forth. WCW would say something like, Mick Foley winning the WWE Championship, that'll put some butts in the seat. Or, you know, you never really got a lot of retorts from WWE. Vince kind of just played it cool until this one night when WCW and WWE were promoting shows in the same area for WCW Nitro and WWF Raw. And you got all of a sudden on live television, you see DX and they start talking about WCW, which was kind of incredible um, in, in, in theory, just, just that part of it. But then next, what we saw was they climbed aboard a they it wasn't a tank it was just kind of like a army vehicle once again vehicles in the in the attitude era but they actually went to the Norfolk scope scope um, in Virginia to basically invade WCW. We embark on a mission. This mission will start at the Norfolk Scope with WCW. WCW sucks! Does anybody here have any of the free tickets? Did you pay for your ticket to come here tonight? Hell no, I came for free! DX, DX, DX! It was a great moment. It was, it, maybe it wasn't one of those moments where you just laughed. It was just one of those moments where you were saying, wow, this is awesome. You know what I mean? Like, wow, what could happen? Are they going to actually see anybody on WCW? You know, like, what are we going to get from this? And it was just one of those awesome moments. Uh, it was outside of the ring. It was in a few vi uh, few separate segments. But, I mean, it, it was just one of those things that, like, once again, you loved being a wrestling fan because you didn't know what you were going to get on Monday night just watching this. Um, it's it's classic vintage DX. Uh, it really it really gave them something to, to talk about because WCW couldn't do this. They didn't do anything outside of, uh, you know, WCW. 
WWE show or headquarters or whatnot, you know. So WWE really had the testicular fortitude uh, to really to really do this to WCW, and it was just one of those moments being like, wow. I love these guys. I love wrestling. And it's not even wrestling, you know what I mean? Like it was just the th- you know, the thought of them invading WCW or doing something to them or whatever, but it was a classic moment. Uh if if you guys are listening and hear some classic moments or what we're talking about, make sure you tweet us on a wrestling POD. Uh that's as much as you're going to get out of that name on Twitter. So it's A Wrestling Pod, A Wrestling POD. Guys, tweet us. Let us know what your funny uh, moments were back then in the Attitude Era. We want to know. We'll talk about them too because we can't touch out on everything, Jonathan. There's so many things to happen. We're just trying to, you know, point out some of the some of the ones that we remember, uh, some of the ones that really, you know, stood out to us. Uh, so let us know if we missed anything and we didn't really talk about anything. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on Twitter. Um, Jonathan, though. Yes, sir. I mean, let's keep this go. Let's keep the show going, buddy. Uh, Mick Foley's "This Is Your Life" for The Rock. I mean, Mick Foley had a lot of classic moments when he came into wrestling. He was, you know, the bad guy, the weird, creepy guy, and then he just became like this whole. I don't know, almost a, a human cartoon, if you will, to where, he, you know, he had a sock puppet, you know, he was just being ridiculous, and he, I don't know, it worked, it worked for him, and it was great, um, you never know what's going to happen to these guys' characters, or what it snowballs into, but Mick Foley, man, the whole thing with the life for your rock, it was great, granted, none, nobody in the this whole This Is Your Life was real, they were all actors, it was still just a, another classic piece that we got to just laugh at. That's a really nice whistle you have around your neck. You and mine, Coach Araka, like to do something special with that whistle. Oh, no. I wonder what that could be. The Rock would like to take that whistle you got, shine it up real nice. That's nice. Turn that some bitch sideways and stick it straight up your candy ass. This was the moment that I think cemented those two guys as not only good wrestlers, good personalities, but just household names. Because people who didn't even watch wrestling were hearing about these two guys after this moment. And I it, it couldn't have worked any other day on any other show, with any other people, those two guys, the, the chemistry that they had was just amazing. The Rock and Sock connection was born on that day, and it made for probably, I would say, my favorite Attitude Era moment, I guess, out of all of that. You had his gym teacher come down, you had an ex-girlfriend come down, you had a, an old teacher of his come down, and it was just everything that you wanted it to be. You got to hear such things as poontang pie. Um, you got to hear, he said, poontang your ass, your ass out of here. Um, it was just some amazing things that came from The Rock. And he was so creative. And I just, I love that moment more than, than anything, I think. That's right. The Rock and Sock connection. I mean, uh, two unlikely stars put together, and that's what you got. So it, it was classic vintage WWE, vintage uh, funny moments. Uh, but these are the moments that we're talking about, guys. These are the things that just make us laugh, uh, things that happen that isn't all about good wrestling or whatnot. I mean, everybody's so mad today. You just got to go back in time and remember all the good times. I mean, there's still good times today, but we're taking them down a little memory lane on the Attitude Era. Uh, so let's keep on going. Um, not only was Mick Foley's This Is Your Life one of the best things that happened in the Attitude Era as far as, you know, funny moments. Uh, I think one of the <laughs> ridiculous things I just shook my head at was the time where Vince McMahon peed himself uh, when he thought Steve Austin was going to shoot him that night. Oh, my! It's a toy! What? It's a toy! Austin was armed with a toy! That is not you funny! you got to remember, Vince, it wasn't Stone Cold Steve Austin that screwed Vince McMahon but it was Vince McMahon that screwed Vince McMahon. I, th- I think you got a little problem there, and I think we got another T-shirt on the way, and I think that T-shirt might just say, 
McMahon 316 says I just pissed my pants. Oh no! Oh man, how humiliating, how degrading. Oh look out! Oh, I got McMahon again! It absolutely was what the Attitude Era was completely about. You had serious moments, you had very funny moments, you had emotional moments, you had a little bit of everything. And at this moment, you really didn't know what was going to happen. You know, Steve Austin drug Vince out into the middle of the ring, and he had a gun, and he was pointing at it. And after watching, like, the Pillman thing, you just really didn't know what was going to happen. And so he, he puts a gun in Vince's face and points it at his head, and Vince, all of a sudden, you, you look at his leg, and he's, he's peed himself. And all of a sudden, Steve pulls the trigger, and you get classic bang 316. Mm-hmm. That's right, Jonathan. Uh, a lot of great stuff. I mean, I, I'm just – when we talk about it, I'm envisioning it, like going back to that moment and just remembering it. And it's like there's nothing about any of these moments that we talked about that I hated. You know, it was – you needed to you needed to gap these matches. You needed to you know put something in between all this wrestling because you know like I said, like I said, granted I love pro wrestling, you love pro wrestling, but you know if you watch it nonstop of just wrestling for like three hours, you kind of need that little bit of a break to to collect yourself. And these were the moments that you know you got to you got to sit that sit back, relax, and just have a good laughing moment. Um, hysterical stuff. Uh, I loved it. I, I can't stop talking about it. And it's this era that we always talk about, the attitude era that, you know, just we relive day in and day out and especially online and YouTube and social media and all that fun stuff. But uh, it, I, I can't get over it, Jonathan. It, it's, I, I'm laughing over everything we talked about in my head. I'm LOLing secretly. WTF. Um, we, you, you spoke about social media we have been taking over social media when you are listening to this and you're thinking to yourself self uh, how can I find out more about these guys we're just two dudes that like to talk about wrestling and you know get on our website obviously it's another wrestling podcast.com that's gonna have pretty much everything that you can want to know about us but if you don't do the face or the the website thing and you want to find out more about us, we're also on Facebook, and that is facebook.com slash another wrestling podcast. So there's lots of great ways to connect with us. We answer all of your questions, we respond to your tweets, we you know, we'll post pictures of you if you if you buy a shirt and send them to us. We are very fan friendly. We we do this because of you. So please just, you know, that's get right. involved. Get involved. That's right, Jonathan. We're not uh, big stars or anything. We're just like you guys out there. We're fans, and we love talking about wrestling. Um, I had nobody to talk about wrestling to, and Jonathan didn't have anybody to talk wrestling to. So that's why we're coming together to talk to each other about the thing we love the most, and that's pro wrestling. And if don't tell my wife or child that I said that, Jonathan, because I love them too, but I also love pro wrestling. Don't tell this bag of M&M's I got by me that either. <laughs> Speaking of that, M&M's or Mars or anybody who is listening today, uh, once again, I'm going to try to do this until it works. So if you are listening to us, Mars, Candy Company, M&M's, send me some M&M's. I love M&M's and I love listening to another wrestling podcast while eating M&M's. Jonathan Benjamin and his sweet tooth. We once tried plugging uh, chocolate oranges. Uh, yep. didn't didn't work out for us. We didn't get anything from it. Now we're we're onto the Mars Company and M and M's. Uh, maybe we could get black and yellow M and M's for uh, another wrestling podcast because those are our colors. Um, who knows? You never know who's going to hear it. But Jonathan, speaking of out there, speaking from another planet, you know. We have another great guest joining us today. He's going to be at FW Wrestling uh, this weekend. He is the Triborough Champion. He is going to take on Matt Seidel uh, for the championship. Uh, he is Paul London, and if you guys listen to anything today, this is the interview you want to listen to. Uh, Paul London is probably one of the best guests anybody could ever have on the show, uh, but Jonathan, well, let's let them listen for themselves. Let's welcome Paul London to the show. Joining us today on another wrestling podcast is a highly skilled multi-time champion he's wrestled around the world and has a unique perspective on life he is the intrepid traveler paul london paul 
Thanks for joining us today. Howdy, yeah, howdy. I, I wish you could translate all that to promoters out there hey, to hire me. I'll try. I'm joking. <laughs> That's a very nice introduction. Thank you. No, no problem. Uh, what have you been doing these days? Uh, traveling intrepidly, okay. you know, um, going to foreign worlds and saving them from evil wizards and battling minotaurs and, uh, you know, rescuing and, and not rescuing a few damsels in distress and, you know, just, just the, the normal everyday, uh, shindig, you know, um, so yeah, life, uh, life's a roller coaster. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I have to say, I'm pretty jealous about all of that. Um, now, February seventh, you you're jealous of the Minotaur fighting the Minotaurs part, right? That's the, well, specifically. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. That's, I. I don't. I yeah. mean, we don't even have them. I'm on the. I'm on the East Coast, and we just don't have them here. So. Um, oh, you guys are missing out. Yeah. No, it's definitely something I've. Uh, you know, bucket list thing. I want to definitely try to hunt one down. So. Yeah, well, I have a few of their eggs, and so I'll bring them maybe this weekend, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll plant them secretly somewhere throughout the the, bur the tri burrows area. That's that's and, a, that would be perfect. Yeah, it'll be like the new alligators in the sewer, you know. Yes, yes. It'll be like Minotaur in the burrows. <laughs> I think you just created like a band name and a TV show all at once. I hope I did. You know, I hope I can be a part of it. I'm a terrible singer, but a hell of a front man. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned it, February 7th, you'll be defending the Triborough Championship against none other than Matt Seidel. Uh, this is going to be obviously an amazing match for FWE, uh, at the Resorts World Casino in, in Jamaica, New York. With that being said, who, and I'm talking to you, so I hope you, you say you, but who has yeah. the better aerial assault? Wow. Um, yeah, well, <clears throat> it's a trick question, actually, you know, if you think about it, because here's the thing. I think, um, obviously, I'm, I'm biased, but I'm realistic at the same time. I think it's pretty hard to find a better shooting star than my own, mm -hmm. um, just in the sense of my size and my accuracy and the impact more than anything um, that I land when I hit it, even when I miss it, thing freaking hurts, you know? Um, but, um, you know, I, I've been doing that, that finisher for almost well over 12, 13 years. And um, I, I, I've really crafted it. I think I, I take a lot of pride in not having it have to be so specific as in, you know, the person has to be this way or I can't do it or it has to be this close or I can't do it. I mean, uh, it's all with a gusto. Yes. You know what I mean? And I've done it from the top to the floor and, you know, split the seas at whatever the Royal Rumble was back in the day when I did it on like 20 cruiserweights and no one caught me. Or none of them were there. I guess they, I guess smart for them, right? They moved <laughs> out of the way. It's yeah. Good defense. And, um, so, so when it comes to the shooting star press, I'm, I will raise my hand. Um, when it comes to other, um, aerial antics, well then, you know, I'm, I'm a realist and I, I understand that, you know, times, uh, times carry on and my body carries on and my, my, uh, my work situation, uh, in the sense that what I do and, and the way that I work, uh, changes and improves in my, in my opinion. <laughs> and so maybe my aerial stuff isn't as dynamic or as, uh, innovative as it might've been back, you know, when I was really pushing my own envelope 10 years ago. Now I just push my own envelope in a different way. You know, I, 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 I put a lot more saliva on it to make sure that it stays shut. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, nobody opens it illegally. Yes. Um, so, you know, it, yeah, that's that's kind of my okay. answer. <laughs> no, <laughs> you trick question. You can't trick me. Uh, you got you know, it. We're, we're both incredible aerialists. Yes. You know, I mean, there's a reason this match was booked. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, I I think that the the real winner it, it's cliche, but the winner is going to be the fans that get to watch this. Uh, 
somewhat of a dream match. And, uh, you know, I, I'll i be honest. It's a wet dream match. It is a wet dream match, yes. I think that's a, a wet v- dream match. That's right. This is going to create so many boners. It's not even funny. The sun it's going to create so many okay. valleys and river streams. It's not even funny. I mean, this, this match is, you know, it's, it's, it's the reason, you know, certain types of pornography yep. are, are, are made acceptable. Yeah, everybody you know. bring the rubber sheets if you're coming to uh, FWE. Yeah, it's practically a, a private, a public customs match. Yes. Um, you, you obviously have been um, wrestling now for quite some time, um, and everybody has one of those how I got started with wrestling. Um, what, what exactly drove you into the world of professional wrestling? I was stupid, um, you know, yeah. I, I didn't know any better, um, it, it was the only thing that I really cared about uh, and obsessed over enough to pursue it, and so, um, you know, it, it, every, everything and every arrow pointed to don't do it, and no. And to me, it was like every red light I saw turned to green, and every arrow that pointed, you know, to go the opposite direction, I spin it and make it work in my favor. And I was just, uh, just bullheaded, you know. I was just relentless. And um, I think that can attribute as to why I, I live a pretty solitary life. I mean, I'm. I spend probably ninety to ninety percent, you know, probably about nine, at least ninety percent of my time alone. Uh, and it's not something I, you know, I, it, it's just the way that my life's crafted itself. Um, but I think a lot of that I can attribute back to just coming up as a kid, trying to work at the things that I felt were going to improve my chances to make this dream a reality. And here I am, fifteen years later, and. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a mighty big breath I've taken, and uh, yeah, I mean I'm I'm happy with it. you know most of everything that's happened. I'm, you know, I've, it's just you know I don't surreal is another cliche word, so I, I I used it, but I wasn't using it to use it. You yes. know what I mean? I was supreme step is a cliche, yes. <laughs> but uh, but it's yeah, it's it's a lot of things. You can't really define it with one word. I mean, it's. It's emotional, I'll tell you that. Um, Do you so. kind of wish that you had tried your hand at something else, or are you happy still with Well, I, yeah, I think I know what you're going to say, it, it, and I didn't mean to cut you off, no, but no. I, I mean, here's the thing is, you know, it's never too late to try my hand at anything else, mm-hmm. and I think that's why, you know, I'm real fortunate uh, for the way things have turned, in a way. I mean, uh, every every deep, deep decline is going to, at some point have its uh, elevated highs and you know it's really just kind of about having faith in myself which you know is a challenge as well sometimes um, because you know you, you maybe things don't always work out the way that you want and you know you, you find yourself questioning yourself or your, your you know the things around you and I mean it's just the, the many challenges of life you know but that's really no different than what anyone else might deal with um, it's just that my my business is my health and my business is my, you know, my well-being. Yeah. And um, all these things are just from a physical standpoint. So then when you put in all the mental aspects of it, as far as from a performer's standpoint, I mean, that's a whole other exhaustive um, part of the process, uh, or at least it can be. You know, I take it that seriously in the sense that, you know, I'm a professional wrestler. I'm not a wannabe wrestler. Yes. I'm not a fan wrestler. I'm not a, you know, private wrestler. I'm not a pretend wrestler. Yeah, I'm just, I'm a professional wrestler. And I've been a professional wrestler for over a decade. Um, yes. Nearing 16 years, I would think. My math is bad. But either way, um, professional, um, that, that's, that's really all about pre- preparation. And... Uh, so I take pride in that, but it's exhaustive, you know, especially through this long. It's 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 tiring. The travel is tiring. So um, so yeah. It, but the thought of shifting all that speed to a different speed, whether it's a, a faster speed 
or slower speed when it comes to your lifestyle, depending on, you know, like you said, try my hand at something else, um, it's difficult. It's very difficult. You know, it's not something where I can just show up at Barnes and Nobles and start working there. Yeah. I, it's nothing against that job, um, but very much like the, it was a, I think it was Will Forte. He played a, a character on Saturday Night Live. It was uh, was like a, he was an old porn guy. Yep. And he tried to get all these other jobs, and he, he he kept messing up because porn was like all that he knew, you know. Yep. Um, and you know he, he's like, it's all I know. It's all I know. Well, it's not that it's all that I know, but I live a very uh, fantastic uh, with a very fantastic mind. Yeah. And that's part of what led me to wrestling. Was the fact uh, that I allow my mind to to take off uh, into fantasies at times, in the sense that you know, call it daydreaming, whatever you want to call it. But um, I'm a firm believer in visualizing dreams constantly because I think that's a major component in making them a reality. And with that, um, so my mind's constantly, you know, racing, and it's it's always thinking or, or visualizing or, or directing or creating or writing or something, you know, even when I'm supposed to be doing something that might seem mundane, um, it, it's going to be difficult to keep my attention um, if, it's, if it's off and going. Um, and that's, that's probably why, I, you know, I'm an actor at heart. Yeah. I was an actor before I was a wrestler. And so that acting something that will forever be in my heart. And if that's ideally something I can do, then wonderful, but, you know, I just try to uh, make the best of each moment. <laughs> There's another cliche for you. <laughs> well, that's, hey, you know, that, that's, they're there for a reason, I guess, but um, you, you mentioned it, you're a veteran as far as your time and accomplishments go in the business. Um, do you see yourself wanting to kind of step away from the ring, or do you still have things that you want to accomplish before you finish? Oh, I don't know. I don't think that's really... You know, I mean, there's times when you think, oh, I never want this to end, and then there's times when you think, why am I still doing this? Um, so it's it's a tough one to... It's just not really something I can answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, uh, yeah, okay. we'll see. Yeah, now, you've wrestled literally all the major stars in the business of past and present. Um, what are your thoughts on some of the newer guys like Steen and De Devitt and Generico getting called up to the WWE. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I, you know, I, I and I wish I'd wrestled more stars in the past uh, than you might think. I mean, I, I really don't. There's so many that I, I really would have loved to get in the ring with, but I didn't, you know, didn't get the chance. But uh, as far as the current crop, yeah, and, you know, along with Kenta and um, a lot of these guys, I mean, I think it's, that's really, you know, it's really encouraging for anything to the current independent scene so that they can think, oh, there's, you know, that door is kicking open a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And then hopefully there won't really even be a door there at some point. Hopefully it'll be switched to like, you know, a garage door or a barn door or a hangar or something where it's much wider than the, um, than the viewing and possibility of, of uh, getting in there. Um, will be easier for guys to, to encourage themselves to do because it is possible. It's extremely possible. And for people to think, oh, well, they'll never pick me and, you know, I'm too brown or I'm too red or I'm too green or I'm too yellow or, I'm, you know, I don't know. Um, you can make all the excuses you want for yourself, but until you absolutely try, here we go with this damn cliche. <laughs> <laughs> You just don't know. You just don't know. Why not you? Yeah. You know, why not you? I want to slap these people. Like, why not you? You know, it's just like, wake up. Are you going to take this thing or not? Yeah. And, um, it, yeah, man, I am the absolute worst when it comes to patience. Trust me. But it has to find its way in there somewhere because it's just, obviously it's, they're not going to call you tomorrow. Yeah. I wish they would. I wish they would. But, you know, have faith. Have faith in the work you're putting in. Um, and so, you know, I think if anything, hopefully that that's what translates to through these signings and through these guys getting, you know, kind uh, called up, I should say, is um, that it can really help be another shot in the arm um, 
to the guys trying to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, one of my, a good friend of mine uh, at NXT is this guy, Buddy Murphy. He's from Australia. And, um, I mean, that's a great story in itself because now that gives a whole continent um, hope. Yeah. You know? Now, it's a powerful thing. Sorry, I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, another, fine. But another person you've had a lot of history with is Daniel Bryan. Um, have you been sure. surprised by the amount of success that he's had in the business today? Am I surprised? Yes. No, I mean, he's he's absolutely fantastic. I'm, you know, I was surprised it didn't happen sooner, to be honest with you. Um, I'm just happy that it's happening to him now. Um, uh-huh. You know, because... You know, Byron's such a sweet guy, in my opinion. I thought he's he's just always very genuine, and who knows, maybe he's a great actor. <laughs> but um, but uh, I'm just you know I'm just happy for him. So um, man, I'm real happy that he he looks like shit. Uh, yeah, he looks like a homeless guy, and and that he doesn't have to preen and look uh, manicured. You know what I mean? I didn't mean look like shit in the sense that he looks literally. You know what I mean? But just sense that. You know, he, you know, it's he doesn't look corporate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they can't get any more corporate than that place. Uh, and so, you know, kudos to him for finding a way to make that work. I I do have a confession. I watch the hybrid dolphin promo probably once a month with you. Oh, uh, what's wrong with you? I'm it, kidding. It is probably one of the best things I've ever seen. For anybody who hasn't seen it, you should check it out. Um, now, yeah. I I I know that that the, uh, never was. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I what a wonderful yeah. thing. I just it, uh, just fate, man. <laughs> we were we we're probably the best promo tag team ever. <laughs> oh, he he couldn't keep it together in that promo, and it's just like the funniest thing because you're so serious, and he's just like cracking up over there. So it's it's really sure funny. sure. Yeah, he's he's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. So I'm I'm real happy for his success. Now you've obviously devoted a lot of your life to pro wrestling. Other than wrestling, what what gets Paul London going? What are, what are some of your other passions? Life, man. Life is um, life's as big a roller coaster as you can find. And uh, when you can enjoy it for the ride that it is, you know that it is, then it really um, it can really surprise you, and it can really open your eyes to some things. It's pretty powerful. Um, and it's a hell of a challenge. It's a never ending challenge. And so, you know, you're constantly having to step up to the plate and do something or, or, you know, at least that's the way that I've always kind of lived my life is I'm, I, I love challenges, you know, and I love to test myself. Um, and I think, I think there's a lot of excitement in that. And so, you know, how do I spend my time or how do I, you know, like, it, 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 there's no, there's no, um, there's no formula. I guess there's no real system. I just, um, I do what I feel like doing <laughs> and it varies so much. I drive a lot though. I will say that I drive a hell of a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a delivery driver. I should be probably, but I drive, I'm in my car, I'm in my car a lot. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I prefer to be outdoors prefer to be around animals um not the human kind but yes. just in general and um you know I, there's a lot of writing involved i'm a very creative person at least i like to think so sometimes in the sense that i like to create a lot of crap um and uh i value my creative crap and i um i i house it and I nurture it and i take my my teat out and I, I let it have a suckle or two um, from my nourishing um, colostrum. Yes. And so, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's all about feeding oneself. If, if you have a kernel, it's much more exciting to see it develop and then pop as opposed to just having it ready to eat, you know. Um, so I'm always on doing something, creating something, I guess. That's just the nature of how I how I live. <laughs> no, it's... None of it's good. 
well. But I'm working on stuff, you know. I'm working. Well, you're doing it all, all your way, which is uh, exciting to hear because I think a lot of people get into. Uh, we spoke with Nigel McGinnis not too long ago. He was trying to create a, um, a like a docu series, a mini series on wrestling, and he was talking about sure. some of the same things that you were talking about. You know, he after wrestling he went to Trader Joe's to try to find a job, and it just you know like he couldn't he couldn't do it. He couldn't figure it out. So I think that right. that's the most important thing is that you get to keep you know keep being you, which is a, a pretty cool thing at the end of the day. Well, you know it's 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 uh it's not too expensive um well i have this wonderful acting coach uh kind of more of a friend really in la when i'm out there and he uses the phrase low budget equals high creativity and so i you know i use that not just in my um acting or performance work but um, throughout most everything I try and do. So, you know, it's fun. Uh, what I can't do is sit all day. Yes. I can't, I can't do that. What I, I mean, I, obviously I can't if I'm being paid, but it would, you know, I gotta be doing something, you know, or I just like, I mean, idle hands are, you know, that's not even, uh, it's a terrible, <laughs> it's a terrible movie with Devin Sawa. Oh, is it ever? Who else, who else is in that? Oh, uh, there's a girl. Yeah, Channel is She, you know, now I'm no. very, I'm very uh, curious. There's a lead in that. There's a female lead in that, but I can't remember who. It is. I think Seth Green's in it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm definitely. Yeah. I'm currently looking Maybe it up. Maybe he's the girl I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, Devin Sawa. I haven't heard that name in a while. That's awesome, man. <laughs> He's in some movie, I think, with Nick Stahl, another name you probably haven't heard in a while. I think it was like uh, Carlita Avenue or something like that. It was like some weird like suspense thriller, straight to video thing. I just but... I just figured it out. It was Jessica Alba was actually in that movie. Well that's Jessica Alba. That's ah, I knew it was Dark Angel. And and Vivica A. Fox is in it too. Wow, that's a that's a really? Wow, now I'm going to have to watch it. Mr. Rebecca Fox in it as well. Yeah. Oh, because he is a, oh, what a terrible Laker. Yeah. Rick Fox. No, I'm not a Rick Fox. Either. Anyways, no, yeah. yeah. I'm man. Anybody go see this movie. <laughs> it, it, I, I can't even believe, I think I watched it on VHS if that tells you anything. So. <laughs> you know, it's an awesome movie. Outpost. I can't. I can't say that I've seen it. So, Outpost. I think it's called Outpost. Yeah, Outpost. Ray Stevenson uh, versus Nazi zombies. Dude, this movie kicks ass. It sounds. It sounds good. That's for sure. Now you, yeah. you mentioned that you're you you do some acting. Is there anything that we would be able to see soon that you're in, or are you just kind of constantly doing acting things? Um, well, that's a constant thing. I mean, that just constantly is a, it's an ever evolving process. I mean, that's just, um, when I'm interacting with people every day, I mean, there's plenty of acting exercises being done right then and there, you know, whether it's even just from a listening standpoint, Yes. you know, that's constantly, um, when I wake up every day, I'm already in the acting gym. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you know, it's like I wake up, I can flip over and start doing 50, 100 push-ups. Sure. I'm getting the, the, the beginning grumblings of what will then be my physical workout, which is, you know, uh, um, kind of a, uh, a professional requirement uh, for my performance jobs. And, but as far as the acting gym, you know, the gymnasium really flex your acting muscles. Um, that's open the second your eyes open, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Whether it's studying the room that you're in, um, or the prison cell that you're in, or the sheet that's over your head, um, you know, observation. I'm constantly observing. I mean, that never, it just never stops. Um, 
And so you're flexing that muscle, you're flexing <clears throat> uh, your memory muscle. Um, maybe I'm working on something uh, where I might have to think of the intent behind it. Um, maybe I'm considering someone's background. Maybe I'm practicing uh, being more empathetic mm -hmm. uh, by creating, you know, it, yeah. Constantly. Yeah. It, no. Now, as far as something, as far as uh, like a project in particular, this and that, um, I can't really say, but um, there is a, <laughs> a silly, goofy um, sizzle reel on YouTube called Hero of the Prophecy, okay. which can uh, give you an idea of um, when I'm acting terribly, but when it's fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is this is it's pretty much it, when I'm in there it's like nothing but outtakes because I, I thought it was something else and yeah anyways it's fun here are the prophecy okay and there'll, be, there'll be more of that soon but yeah now <laughs> um, obviously you're you're a busy guy and uh, we want to let you get get doing that I'm really not, yeah I am going to go soon but <laughs> I'm really not that busy <laughs> but um, where obviously you're you're doing wrestling things, you're doing some acting things. Where uh, is the best place for fans to keep up with you? I know in the social media world that you've probably got Twitter and Instagram and all I those do. things. I do. I don't have any Facebook. Okay. So if you've been sending me or sending me messages, um, actually it's really funny. Alex Wright from WCW fame, Dallas Wonder Kid. Yes. Uh, he sent me a message via Twitter. And said, hey, you know, can you check your Facebook pages? I've been trying to get a hold of you. And um, I had to send him a, a direct message, you know, like, I can't, you know, hey, listen, buddy, I'm, I don't, it's not me. Sorry, I don't, it wasn't, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> Damn imposters, you know. Um, so I'm on Twitter at LondonFu, L O N D O N F U, but more for like the Kung Fu sense as opposed to the Cena sense. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, at London Foo. I uh, recently broke 10,000 followers. What would he do? I look at some other people that I've never heard of, and they have like 400,000, but it's uh, it's pretty much the only place I put out anything um, on my own for the time being. Um, there might be a Facebook page being developed down the road, but that's not really the top of my priority list. So what you're telling me is the other day whenever... Paul London on yeah. Facebook told me that he was going to meet me. That wasn't you. No, that uh, Son of that a... was that was my bizarro. That's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> There's a word for it. What's it called? Uh, dang it! I just saw it. Oh, I can't remember. Are we talking Where... about like Avatar? No, not an Avatar. It's like a double, like a. I mean, there's like a shemp, you know what I mean? You can yep. use like a shemp. Yep. There was another word I just recently... I like shemp better, personally. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. goes back to the Bruce Campbell days. Yes. Um, yeah, that was that was my, my shemp, I guess. That's the only word I can think of at the moment. Well, that's, ah. that's, that's, a, that's a good enough word for me. Um, we, <laughs> we, we definitely appreciate your time. We can't wait to see you at FWE oh. this, this Saturday. Um, you know, it, just good luck. That's the only thing I can say. I, I just, I. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. He's amazing. Heaven born, or I'm sorry, Jesus. Can't believe I just said that. What yeah. a terror. Oh, Matt Seidel. He's reborn though. That's he what I've understood. He's reborn as Evan. He's reborn as Matt. That's it. See, I just and said I it think... too. That's it. Yeah. Well, you know, last time I saw Evan, uh, well, every time I see Evan, he's got this great smile on his face. So, uh, I'm gonna take it off. No, <laughs> I. Uh, yeah. Uh, may the may the happiest soul win. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good a good thing for me. Uh, maybe you know, maybe Fangora on a pole match is what we should be going for. Yeah, and you know I'll have plenty of uh, Minotaur baby Minotaur eggs with me. Please, please and bring so those. And we'll see. Maybe I'll present one to them as a as a friendship token. That, that sounds great. Well, uh, thank you again for joining us, and uh, you know, come back anytime. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and I will see you guys around the Cosmic Hemisphere. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know that that interview will ever be topped. Paul London, the intrepid traveler, he will be wrestling for FWE this weekend. Go out and see it. It is a dream match, I think. Uh, even if it's happened before, even if it happens again, it's still going to be a dream match. These guys are going to put on a great show. So, speaking of great shows, we have some coming your way. February is going to be an amazing month. Next week, it's Valentine's Day. What are you going to do? You're going to get... You're gonna spend some time with your your lady. You're gonna be or or your man yeah. if you're a lady <laughs> listening. I don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, you know, even if you're alone or you have a pet and you want to listen to it, who better to have on the show than Val Venus and Trina Michaels? Uh, we have a a wrestler who was portraying a porn star, and now we also have a porn star who's into wrestling, uh, what quite the quite the combination, uh, I, I guess on Valentine's Day. I know it's not as romantic, a little bit edgy, a little bit attitude era esque. But what what better what better guest would you want on Valentine's Day than Val Venus and uh, you know the lovely Trina Michaels, right? Yeah, I mean, do you see what we did there, Valentine's Day? It's uh, it was a little bit of a stretch, but um, it was great, and I can't wait to see what they have to say about Valentine's Day. That's right, and Jonathan, you think we should give these guys a little uh, tease about what else is coming up in the month of February? Yes, please do. Well, Jonathan, not only do we have Val Venus and Trina Michaels coming up next week, we're also going to be hearing from five time, five time, five time champion <laughs> booker t booker t will be on another wrestling podcast uh in a few weeks uh also we're gonna have the living legend larry zabisco uh just two names we're gonna throw out there to keep you guys more enticed uh but you never know what can happen uh we're gonna have a lot more surprises on the way so guys make sure you stay tuned to another wrestling podcast today's show is brought to you by we have our sponsor for today's fwe wrestling no Limits 2015, live this Saturday. Doors open at 4. We have Kurt Hawkins, who already joined us, versus Johnny Gargano. Matt Hardy versus Drew Galloway. Matt Seidel versus Paul London. What a great interview by both of these guys on the show uh, today with uh, Hawkins and London. Uh, speaking of uh, champions, we had Candice LeRae, the FWE Women's Champion, versus Veda Scott. The Addiction versus Adrenaline Express. Meet all the stars from 5 to 8. Guys, if you hear this, head on out to Queens this weekend. You don't want to miss No Limits 2015 live from Resorts World Casino in New York City. Uh, I'm excited for this, Jonathan, and I can't wait. I'm going to I'm gonna be checking it out. Uh, maybe we can even get a little live chat going or something with the tweets. If you guys are on there, you know, maybe we'll live tweet the show or something. But uh, let us know. Are, are you excited for this? I am. I'm absolutely excited. It's a great show. They're great guys over at FWE, putting on just just nonstop talent, things that you never thought you would see, the best in independent wrestling in the area. Community Calendar. This weekend, Saturday, February 7th, Northeast Wrestling presents Over the Top. Doors open at 6.30, live from Bethany, Connecticut, there is going to be a 25-man over-the-top Royal Rumble match, and the winner of the match receives a future Northeast Wrestling Championship title shot. Other than that match, if you needed anything else, there will be Brian Anthony versus Jimmy Preston, as well as a no-DQ Northeast Wrestling title match, Warbeard Hansen versus Northeast Wrestling Champion Matt Taven. Please visit northeastwrestling.com for any upcoming shows. We want to thank you guys for listening today. Every week we create something for you to listen to and it's absolutely free. We are the Wrestling Fans Podcast because after all, we're fans also. Help us out by subscribing to our show on iTunes. While you're there, you can rate us and give us a good review. If you're looking for more AWP, then head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com to find out more about upcoming guests and where we may pop up. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, 
Instagram, and buy an official AWP shirt from ProWrestlingTees.com. We couldn't do the show without you, so please tune in next week for... (sighs) Another Wrestling Podcast. Podcast.